The main goal of my color grading tutorials has been to teach you guys one thing, LUT independence. We've really gotten to dive into some really cool creative color grading concepts, and we've done it in a really time-effective manner. But I'd be lying when I say when under a time crunch, as a filmmaker and a colorist, a LUT can be my best friend. So today I'm going to teach you guys one of the major crucial mistakes I see people make in DaVinci Resolve 16 when it comes to using LUTs, how you can avoid it, and I'm also releasing my new LUT pack today so I can really show you guys how you can leverage LUTs and really leverage all the information your amazing camera has captured because a lot of the times when we're using these LUTs, we're losing information and we don't even know it. These LUTs are designed to work in Rec. 709 so it doesn't matter if you're shooting Canon or Sony or if you're shooting Log or just a standard picture profile. I'm going to show you guys how to make these work for you and how to get the most information out of your footage. But first, roll intro. What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer and cinematographer, and let's jump right into this lesson on LUTs. So you guys heard me say that there's a crucial mistake a lot of people make when it comes to using LUTs in DaVinci Resolve specifically. And the initial reaction, well one, if you left click here, you see, oh, I can just select a LUT, come here, and then throw on any LUT that I want, and boom. It just adds it and then my color grading's done after I make some adjustments. The issue that you run into is that you're losing information because you're applying it on the first node here. So your corrections aren't taking into account all the information your awesome camera has captured. So what you wanna do is you're gonna wanna add another node and then you're gonna wanna apply your LUT, especially if you're using one of those Rec. 709 LUTs from whatever log footage you're using. That way we can go back, let me just find the LUT I was using real quick as an example, because this is one of my uh, Canon Log Direct 709 LUTs I made. And then you want to make your corrections on this first node. That way you have all the information there to begin with, and you're going to be able to make whatever corrections you want. But now that we've gone through that, let me show you my preferred method on using LUTs. And it's a simple three-step process. We're going to add three nodes right here. And then we're going to go ahead into our open effects. And the first node, we're going to have a color space transform. Now you guys have seen me use this method before, but I'm going to go to Rec. 709, put in my input value, so shot in Rec. 709 and see log 3, and then I'm going to convert it to Blackmagic 4K Gen 3 and RE log C. From there, I'm going to add another color space transform on my third node and put in the output from over here, which was Blackmagic 4K Gen 3, RE log C, goes into my input, and then Rec. 709. And then I'm going to turn on luminance mapping because you see the ugliness here. Watch how luminance mapping just takes care of that for me. Now, these values for you, your input values are going to be whatever you shot in, but now we have a bigger color space to work with. So from there, I'm going to drop down just the exposure of it a bit. And I'm going to bring down my black point. I'm going to add some saturation to bring life into the clip already a good looking image now i'm going to go ahead turning off open effects i'm going to bring up my luts i'm going to bring up my lut pack and i want to show you guys my kodak emulation because i love kodak films you can see the before and after how we've already added those kodak tones and now that i have an idea of what it looks like i'm going back to node 2 because i have all that information in there and i'm going to add in just a warmer color temperature really that's my one click that I want to use for that LUT. And I think that's a beautiful image there. If I want to really sell the Kodak film look, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in some film grain. But I want to show you guys how easy it is now to do this on multiple clips. So I have another clip here. And instead of doing that same process over and over again, I apply the same setup and I just simply reset node two. I know this was actually shot in C-Log3, so this is all good. And I'm going to reset the LUT. And now I'm going to add in the LUT that I really want to use on this one, which is going to be my Fall Vibes Mark III. Now I have this bigger space. And I am going to, again, set my black point, drop down those shadows a little bit, bring up those highlights just a smidge. And now I, what the really big thing is going to be the color temperature. And you're like, whoa, that's too strong. And you're right, which is why I'm going to come in here now to our key input. 
I'm just gonna bring that down a smidge. Probably about 68, and now I'm gonna refine it, because I already knew that was gonna be too strong. A little bit less on the magenta, a little bit more on the, or maybe a little bit less on the warm. And then coming back in here, I might just make that not so sharp. And again, without the LUT, with the color grading LUT, before and after. And the same thing applies as I go to the next clip. Simply come up to color, apply one grade prior. So reset that actually, teal and orange grade. And reset this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth there. And if I really want to be zealous, I can go in and key out my skin tones the same way I've showed you guys in DaVinci Resolve before. And then again with this clip, apply grade from one clip prior. I'm simply gonna change the input because this is no longer Rec. 709. It's actually the D gamut in Canon D log. And this is just simply teal and orange, but here I would wanna use maybe, let's use SLX. How does that look here? And you can see there before and after, before and after. And let me turn these down so we have a bigger area to work with. A beautiful grade off the bat and we can simply adjust this and make adjustments if we want to but I think something like that or we could even switch out the LUT and do something like fall vibes and then we're definitely gonna turn that down because that's a little strong and maybe cool it down as well we can see here a nice before and after so you see here how each one of these LUTs that I have in here really gives a unique and distinct look. So that's the way I use LUTs in DaVinci Resolve 16 without sacrificing any of the information my camera has picked up. In a future video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use my Rec. 709 LUTs in the ASICS workspace because it is a little bit different, a little bit more complex, but it's still doable and it's still pretty quick. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications if you already have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media, the link is in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are in the description down below. Share this video with any Anybody who needs to hear it and remember my LUT pack is in the description down below when you guys support me it really allows me to have my creative vision and create all these awesome videos if you are ever feeling uninspired uncreative or just want to give up remember every day airplanes take off against the wind live love laugh stay inspired and as always stay fabulous my name is Sydney and I'll see you guys next time peace out